You can do a line of cocaine and not get hooked or addicted to it, but your brain will never forget it. And it will make it easier for you actually to get addicted to it. When it comes to cocaine addiction and using drugs even, the thing that people don't sometimes really understand is how our brain reacts when we do this drug. I'm a recovering cocaine and alcoholic addict, so I share for educational purposes only through my lived experiences. And cocaine is a drug that's a stimulant. It's going to produce more dopamine than pretty much any drug you've ever had before. Now, the amazing thing with cocaine, the first time that anyone ever snorts or uses this drug, it's going to produce more dopamine than you ever have, have had. You are going to feel amazing. You're going to have this big mood energy. Your confidence is up anxiety has gone, depression has gone. For 15 minutes, it feels truly amazing. And then it goes away. The thing that you don't really realize is that your brain has now carved a new pathway of reward. Your brain, if you picture this as your brain right here, has a new pathway right here inside that says, if I do cocaine, it's going to make me feel amazing. Now, your brain might not fully identify it as the cocaine itself, and it may take a few more times using it for this to even register fully with your brain what is giving it this feeling, but it knows that it had an amazing feeling. It knows that it had this amazing rush. And this is why a lot of times with drugs, especially cocaine, people can use them for a little bit in the very beginning and not necessarily get hooked. You're going to use it, you know, one weekend and then maybe you don't use it again for a couple months and then you use it another weekend. So it does take a little while for your brain to eventually tie together that this is this drug, this is the substance that is creating so much dopamine. This is what's giving me this amazing feeling. But once it finally does make that connection, that is how your addiction now starts. And your addiction starts to feed itself. I have talked with a lot of different individuals out there where they did drugs just like myself at like 17 was the first time I did cocaine. And it wasn't amazing. It wasn't obsessive. It, it felt good. Didn't have a desire to do anymore. But I also didn't realize that my brain had mapped out all of a sudden that, hey, this is something that we like. And it wasn't until I was in a very low moment of my life going through a divorce that I ended up with a friend of mine. He was like, hey, let's do some cocaine. Let's do some coke. So he hit up his dealer. We ended up getting an eight ball. We split it. And I remember doing that line in my car. And that line of cocaine wasn't at all what I remembered it being. This time through all of a sudden, I wasn't sad. I wasn't depressed. I, all this stress, everything going on, this divorce, all went quiet for a while. All the, the, the trauma and, and the pain that I had going on in my head, it all went silent. And I felt, man, this is really amazing. This is like a reward. This is a reward. It's a treat. And that's how I looked at it. I never had the intention when I did cocaine to become a cocaine addict. And I don't think a lot of people out there use a drug necessarily to become an addict. We feel it's going to enhance. We're experimenting, whatever it might be. I remember after that night, I, I didn't do all the coke. And I brought it home. I had it in a bag. And I put it in a jewelry box. And I remember there was times that I would just open it up and look in there and look at it. And I wouldn't use it, but I knew that this would make me feel amazing. And I told myself, I'm not going to do this for a couple weeks. I would look at it throughout the, the week, know that it was there. And I was almost got to the point that I was counting down the days until I got to do it again. And all this anticipation, all this buildup producing dopamine, was all creating and forming an addiction inside me that I didn't fully realize or know. To the excitement that I had the next time I got to lay out a line and do a line of cocaine, it felt great. It felt amazing. It felt like it just made the world go quiet. But it was almost too good and I didn't want to ruin a good thing. And so again, it was me trying to budget it and I was able to for a while. And I was able to stop even for a while. But it was always there. It always rented space. And even when I wasn't doing it, it was amazing how these thoughts would creep up of just going, man, if I just had a line of Coke right now, how much better I would feel. Or if I just did a little bit right now, how it would feel. That it was always now in my brain. 
And it will probably always be in my brain because it's still there. But it, it changed me. It wasn't until my later 20s that all of a sudden my wife Brandy, who I was with, who took her life, we started doing it together. And she would even tell me, she was like, man, you get such crazy eyes and so excited when we're going to do this. And I didn't even know what she meant by that. And I didn't even know that I got that excited about it. But I did. I knew, I knew what it would do. And every time I did it, it felt great. It felt good. And I could not tell you at the point when it flipped. Because there's a point that happened that it flipped that it no longer gave me this amazing high. It, the high that it was giving me wasn't enough. I kept chasing more. I kept chasing happiness. It was like chasing happiness. How did I go from 17 doing a drug that didn't give me any kind of feeling in the world to in my 20s now all of a sudden I'm, I'm starting to really like this to being able to walk away from it for a little bit to going back to this and, and, and to enjoying the feeling and to becoming more obsessed with it to where it's not giving me even the feeling that I want anymore. But what still gave me such a high and excitement was the fact of just talking to the dealer and talking and knowing that he's on his way and getting the bag in my hand. It was like that made me higher than doing the drugs itself. It became to the point that my cocaine addiction was about getting the drug and not even using the drug because it was, as soon as I had the drug, this whole buildup was so much excitement, so much just feel good euphoria going on in my brain that by the time I got it, it was like it was over because I knew that once I did this, it was going to be followed by depression. I knew my brain was going to go depressive and that sucked, but I, I didn't want to get more because if I got more, then I'm just going to do it. And I'm not really an addict. And I always, in my weird brain, had it that I would like microdose. I'd get an eight ball only. Or I'd, you know, I, I'd, I'd get two eight balls. And it would always be an eight ball because if I got more combined, it meant now that I have to really start admitting I'm an addict. And I didn't want to. And it was almost like I didn't want to lose that high that I could have had all the coke in the world around me. I would have still wanted to dial a dealer because that gave me more. The drug itself gave me emptiness and I kept throwing stuff on of sex and mixing alcohol and Viagra and different things to try and get more chaos and, and this high back that I couldn't get back. I couldn't get that initial amazing feeling back. And the sadness that you hit as your pile shrinks, as this, this amount goes away, knowing that I'd almost be more excited to hurry up and use this so that I could call the dealer again and have that whole excitement back. And that's the path that my addiction went. And this was so far down the road from when I originally did it because I never, your brain never understands fully the first time that you do a powerful drug like this of truly what happened. It just knows that something amazing happened. And it likes that feeling. Like you, we have to admit that that feeling is amazing, but it re-cultivates our brain. Our brain starts to hijack itself. It starts to no longer think emotionally is what it's driven by. That logic of committing felonies and stealing and lying and all the stuff that goes along with addiction, we don't pay attention to anymore and that doesn't matter. And that's the scariest part about addiction is how you look back eventually and you go, how did I get here? Because it wasn't that first line. It maybe wasn't the second line. It wasn't that first bag. But now all of a sudden I can't live without a bag. And you don't know what that tipping point was. You don't know what that moment was that snapped, that changed everything. And that's the scary part of addiction is how it sneaks up on you. And how it rewires your brain that nobody fully realizes that your brain will not forget an amazing feeling. And the worst part when you get sober is it still knows that feeling is there. It's not going to do it. You're, you're logically processing against it, but it's there. And it is a struggle, man. And that's why I share. I, I share for educational purposes only. And I share through my lived experiences to remind you that it does get better. And it does. Is it hard days sometimes? Yeah. But it gets better. And you, you have to just find what works for you. 
whether it's going to NA or AA or Elanon or all of the different meetings that there are out there, you can go to rehab, go to inpatient treatment or outpatient treatment, download Sunflower Sober, start tracking days of sobriety, start talking to your AI sponsor, even just start getting into a community, asking others what they've done to get sober, going to a doctor, a psychiatrist, a therapist, getting on the right meds. I mean, there are so many different avenues out there that you have to try and find what works for you and then restart cultivating your brain. And it is easier said than done. You you fight for it. And there's time that your brain's going to your brain is going to be working against you. But just keep knowing that you're not alone. And you're not the first person to do this. And you're not going to be the only person to do this. And that yes, it, it can happen and you can get sober. And that's what it's all about.